Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our morning inspiration. Monday, February 5th, 2024. May the good Lord be with you today. And may his face continue to shine upon you. May he give you peace. May he protect you today. May he provide for you and sustain you. Our reading today comes to us from Luke chapter 5, reading verses 17 to 25. It says, And it came to pass on a certain day, as he was teaching, that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Verse 18, And behold, men brought in a bed a man which was taken with the palsy, and they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before him. 19, And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went upon the housetop and let him down through the tiling with his coat into the midst before Jesus. 20, and when he saw their faith, he said unto them, Man, thy sins are forgiven thee. 21. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this which speaketh blasphemes? Who can forgive sin but God alone? 22. But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answering said unto them, What reason ye in your hearts? 23. Whether it is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Rise up and walk. But that he may know that the Son of Man hath power upon earth to forgive sins, he said unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise and take up thy coat and go into thine house. 25. And last. And immediately he arose up before them, and took up that whereon he lay, and departed into his own house, glorifying God. And I say, Amen. We give God thanks this morning again for his holy word. This is a beautiful story about faith. Now, Jesus was here in a particular house teaching, and some men brought a friend of theirs to Jesus because he was crippled. He could not walk and he has been that way for a while. So he's not able to walk. And so Jesus was there ministering and his friends decided that they would take their friend to Jesus for him to heal. But when they got to the door, because of so many people that was there, they could not get to go inside the house. And so they thought of a way that they could get their friend inside to Jesus. And so they went up on the roof and they removed the tile from the roof and they let their friend down in front of Jesus. Jesus was amazed by the passion and the faith of these men or these friends that they were willing to go to this distant to help their friend because they believed that Jesus could heal their friend. Jesus went ahead and he healed the man. But before he healed the man, there were some members of the church that were there. The Bible called them Pharisees and Sadducees and all these men. They were present. Now they start to, to grumble in their hearts about the fact that Jesus forgave the man of his sin. And they are saying, but only God alone could forgive sin. And they are right in, in a manner of speaking, but because they did not accept Jesus as Lord, and they did not believe that he was the Son of God, they thought he was just a regular man. That is why it was difficult for them to look past their own ignorance and see that it was 
it was God himself standing in front of them. They accused Jesus of blaspheme. Now Jesus told the man that his sin was forgiven and that he should take up his bed and go to his house. And immediately he took up his bed. He was healed instantly. So he wasn't sick with the parsley anymore because of his faith and because of the power that Jesus possess or have. Now, what is the lesson that we are to take away from this? The Bible says that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And in life, we will meet upon circumstances that demands us to exercise faith in God. And so as a Christian, we are to live by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. And if we believe that God is all powerful, if we believe that God can do much more, far beyond our understanding, then we need to approach everything in life with that concept in mind. Knowing that there's no difficulty that God cannot help us to overcome. There's no sickness that he cannot heal. There's no pain and suffering that he cannot rescue us from. And so, whatever your concerns are, whatever it is that you are experiencing now, believe in God and his power to help you. Put it before him. Just as those friends took their friend to Jesus, we need to take people to Jesus for him to heal. And how can we do that? We can pray for them. We can encourage them. We can what? Share the love of Christ with them. Introduce them to Jesus so that Jesus can restore them. So we need to love our friends enough to introduce them to God and to introduce them to a better way. We need to love our family members enough to introduce them to God and to life eternal. And so whatever it is in there in you from stepping out in faith, put it before God now. Trust that God will help you. There's nothing that is too hard for him to do. And even if the road seems impossible, if there's a multitude and you can't get to go to access Jesus, you need to do like these friends. Cut a hole in the top of the house and go down. So you need to crawl on your hands and your foot if need be. Whatever it is that you need to do to get to Jesus, you need to do. So if it is something in your heart that is blocking you from accessing Jesus and the power that is available to you, then you need to let go and let God. If it is a sin that is plaguing your life, you need to ask him to forgive you and to cleanse you and to make you whole again. When we go through these similar experiences, a lot of the time we are so broken down. We are so we have the world on our shoulder. So I imagine that the man probably experienced some of those moments. But when Jesus restored him, when Jesus healed him, he was so excited. He was so happy. To be able to walk again. No, he doesn't have to be burdened down by this condition, by his sin. No, he's free and free indeed because the Son of God has set him free. And so I encourage us today as we continue to look to him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the throne of grace. May we surrender our hearts in totality to him. To him. May we seek him with all our being and may we trust and depend on him. He is our provider, he is our protector, he is our caregiver and he is our God and our life giver. And so may God continue to bless you. May God continue to bless all of us as we continue to serve him and to walk in his way. Amen.